What's up, family? What's up? What's up? Welcome to Positive Power, Double XI Christian Media. And you're listening to Late Night with Jerry Brooks Live Worldwide and Paul G. The Voice. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Tonight, we're going to have a great, great guest. Very right, author. So he's here to talk about his brand new book called Unclassified. Right. We're going to talk about what it's like to be inside, outside, and around CIA. That's right. A lot of you guys watch those shows. I just finished watching an off- awesome movie called The Messiah where the CIA was running them down. Awesome. So you got to check it out, y'all. There's a lot of good flicks out there talking about the CIA. A lot of us don't know a lot about it. But they, they babysit the, the U.S. They keep an eye on us. Keep us, keep us out of trouble. Keep trouble from away from us. All right, but we're going to find a little bit more about this author. Now, and uh, the good news is, Paul G. the voice would be interviewing. All right, let's bring Paul G. What's up, Paul G. the voice? How you doing? Jerry Voice Live Worldwide. I am wonderful. I woke up this morning. How are you? That man is okay. Yeah, it was a, it was a good day today. Yeah, half a day. That's good. That's yeah. good. Half a day. Yeah. Half a day. Any day that's a half a day or a day off of work, that is always a good day. Yeah, Batman, Batman said he was going to start his spring cleaning a little earlier this year. So we starting up on the top floor, you know, because there's so much to do these days. I'm working you know. your way down. Yeah, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start working with the windows once the <laughs> sun start coming out. But right now, you know, it's time to, you know, it's time to give stuff away. You know, um, the Goodwill and a lot of those other industries are looking forward to um, mm-hmm. receiving items for the spring. People need spring clothes. Uh, you know, the, I mean, we had a very warm winter, so we really didn't really need no boots or anything. But uh, And if you got tennis shoes you don't really wear, you know, they could use those kind of items, you know. So that's what I'm about to do. Get rid of some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. How about we, you? We accumulate so much. You know, we, 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 we buy, we go shopping, we accumulate things. We forget we have things. Yeah. We buy some more and, you know, and then the kids grow and maybe they have gently, you know, as they say, gently worn clothes. They yep, have gently exactly. worn clothes and and all of that accumulates. We don't realize. Yeah, books. I had, a lot, of, I had a lot of books yeah. that I've read that I yeah. probably can. I mean, that's a hard thing because um, with the Internet, you know, people buying, you know, books for their devices and everything and audio books. Um, I'm thinking about taking those to the library. I know a lot of times the library have budgets and stuff and they like to buy new books, but I'm going to see if I can donate to maybe someone right. who, who opened a library, maybe in their facility, you know, maybe not the, the public library, but maybe an organization that has a library and maybe the job. Maybe I could just put some books on the table. Somebody may just want to pick it up and read it at their desk. Might try that. Yeah. You know, I think about that. Yeah. Cause there, there are a lot of us, Still like a, still like a physical book. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. We, we got do. the Kindles. Or yeah, we don't have devices so yeah, long. Sometimes you got to take, take a little break from it once in a while, right? I know. Just pick <laughs> up a physical book. That's right. Do it, y'all. All right. And right speaking back in the old days. and speaking of physical <laughs> books, this young man on the on the other on the in the studio with us tonight, he has a new book. And it's a physical book that you guys can pick up. Yeah. It's on Amazon. It's called Unclassified, CIA. I don't have the whole book in front of me, but I'm looking at it. look like you say, at my life before. And what's that? During my time with the CIA. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get a chance to let him express himself and, and talk about, um, I guess, the purpose. Why, why, you know, we drove him to write this book. And Paula G., our expert, yeah. our TV, our radio hostess of the Moses, is going to handle it, handle the steering wheel, right? Yes, absolutely. I appreciate you, Batman. Thank you so much. All right. And before, and, we... uh, before I go any further, I want to... Uh, oh, go ahead. I'm no, I was sorry. Great, I was great we say, we got um, a few more minutes. Yeah, I was going to say before... Yeah, I was going to wrap it up. I was going to say before I go, I just want to say congratulations. Um, my journey is now airing in Chicago. Uh, they call it North Chicago, which makes up Amen. about 12, 15 uh, uh, prominent counties. Uh, so God's been really good to us. Um, you know, DeKalb County is a very rich county. Um, now, up, up, what's that? The Midwest? Chicago's the Midwest around the Great Lake, right? Am I right or wrong? That's, that's... Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's where Chicago's we the Midwest. Yes. Yeah, but yeah, the DeKalb County's right here in the uh, Atlanta. And an area, Decatur area, yeah. the Cap County area, mm-hmm. the greater, the greater, the greater yeah. Georgia, they call it, the greater, mar- the great marketplace. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's what he spent. They like yeah. to spend money, it's, earn money, and spend money. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's all about. There you go. See? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we we are grateful. So shout out to all, all of those platforms, those networks that are broadcasting my journey with Paul G. We are so appreciative. And of course, WATC TV 57 right here in Atlanta. I'll be in the studio tomorrow evening yeah, for Atlanta yeah. Live. So we thank them so much and appreciate them. That's right. What's their and, time, uh, Paul? Uh, everybody that's joining us tonight. Yeah. We got Harvey Morris has joined us tonight. Samuel Brown has joined us tonight. Got some folks. Lakeisha's out there. Yeah, yeah, Lakeisha. So y'all yeah, that, was some yeah. that was a great show. That was a great show. We, got, we made a new friend with um, <laughs> Lakeisha's uh, uh, guest, uh, Mr. Deontay Bolden. Uh, he lives in the Atlanta area, and uh, I, I told him we'd love to have him on the set when we when Batman come to town on um, September 18th. We'd be oh, at the Black Box at the Good mm-hmm. Acting Studio with Michael Good. That's right. So you guys got to come by and yeah, um, hang out with us. Yeah, back at the Black Box. That's right. Friday night. Yeah, we'll and speaking of, the black, speaking of the Black Box, we got to give them a shout-out. I'll be over there on Friday evening. We'll be um, taping. We're doing a Facebook Live over there. Awesome. They're really excited about a nonprofit that they're starting for at risk youth in the arts. So we'll be talking about that more um, yeah, yeah. later. But we just want to give them a shout out, Michael Mario Good of the Good Acting Studio. That's right. Um, we're we're excited about what's what's going on. We'll we'll talk about that. Yeah, but, yeah. And I, and I got uh, a shout out too. I want to shout out to uh, Brandon, Brandon Lusu. That's right, Lusu Brand. Um, he actually be covering yeah. us in our pearl. So um, actually been out. I actually got some new stuff that's gonna be coming in. Uh, uh, for because uh, a lot of people keep saying, "But you need more stuff with your with your with your name on there." <laughs> so I was like, All right, more TV production stuff, you know. So um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, more stuff. So I'm, I'm, I wanted Don't to get some jackets, but um. You know the weather. The weather been so crazy. I'm afraid to, to order hoodies. I would like to get a hoodie, but I don't know. The weather is. I don't know. I'm, I'm afraid it's gonna be 90 degrees uh, next week. So I better not do that. Oh, it's not. Even in Maryland. But you know, it's the weather fluctuates. Yeah, the weather. But you know, the weather fluctuates. You have cool evenings mm-hmm. when you go on. You know, down the eastern shore, you have those cool evenings. So you know, a hoodies. A hoodie is always. Useful. All that equipment we we be moving around. I need I need t shirts <laughs> that come absorb. <laughs> That's right. This is true. Yeah, t shirt time. That's right. And also shout out to WKHS. Speaking of Chestertown, Maryland, St. Michael's, all the beautiful Upper and Lower Shore. I had a chance to talk to uh, Mr. Potter. Uh, he talked about the music, mm-hmm. his, the internship, the work he's doing over at Salisbury uh, uh, um, University with uh, some of the kids that's in the in, um, in music. Uh, it was exciting to hear that you know small companies are reaching out to, to some of our colleges. I know the Ravens, the Baltimore Ravens, talk a lot about that. What they're doing with um, some of the local colleges around here with the students, you know, introducing them to to, to sports marketing, which is tremendous. But just imagine yeah. social media marketing is is humongous too for a small business. That's a lot to take on by yourself, and you you know you and I know mm-hmm. just doing what we do, you know, working together, collaborating. It, it could yeah. be a pretty big challenge, you know. Because you're doing a book and you got yeah. this TV show, the radio show. It's a lot. And I know you the did radio mention. Show. Yeah. You, and you mentioned yeah. you need help. Yeah, that's a lot. That's right. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, well, we well, definitely do. With all that said, Paula G. <laughs> help, help, help. That's right. We need help. And with all that said, uh, again, um, tune in, everybody. If you're in the Northeast, I'm um, talking about, I, I, I guess I could say the Tri State, the Del Marva, the DMV. You can pick up. WKHS on Sundays from 6 to 8. That's right, all smooth jazz. You catch them on 90.5 FM if you want to tune in. And you catch them on their website at WKHSradio.org. Or you can catch them right here on Wednesday night on their podcast right here on Positive Power with Double XL with Jerry Was Live. Just uh, Google Jerry Was Live on Spreaker Radio. You can catch us on Spotify. And just go to our Facebook page. You find everything. All right, well, we're ready to talk to Mr. Kerr. You ready for Mr. Kerr? Definitely. All right, Mr. Kerr, Definitely. Richard J. Kerr, welcome, welcome to Positive Power. Late night. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well, thank you. Awesome, awesome. We hope it's not Sounds too... like you're having fun. Oh, yeah, we, we, we have a ball all Always. the time. Always. Always. <laughs> <laughs> So we look, we looking forward to this this uh, this this um, this engage this conversation. Uh, we we definitely want to hear uh, what's going on with your book and why you wrote it and where you are in your life and your purpose and all that good stuff. So Batman, just going to say hello and I'm on mute. I'm right here if you guys need me. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Batman. Shouts out to you, Batman. 
And thank you all so much for joining us for another episode of Late Night Radio with Jerry Voice Live and Paula G. Shouts out to my sister, Shay Samuels, who's with you on the first and third Mondays as well. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you for joining us. And you all give us some hearts, give us some thumbs up, and let us know that you're out there. Harvey, thank you for listening. Samuel, thank you so much for listening. My guest this evening is a former deputy director of the Central Intelligence Agency, also known as the CIA. And during his 30-plus years in the CIA, he rose through the ranks. He's going to share that journey with us. He has briefed presidents. He has established a reputation for integrity and object and he joins us this evening please put your hands together robot give us some love for former deputy director richard james Kerr. welcome to positive power well it's a pleasure to join you yes yes we're we're i'm excited when i saw that you were going to be a guest on this show i'm like wow this kind of takes me takes me back a bit um so i'm i'm Really excited to have you, you know, on the show and to share a bit of your journey. You started out as a, as a GS seven. For those of us who know, you know that that uh, government system. You rose through the ranks. You started as a GS seven analyst clerk right out of college, which is huge. Give us a brief overview of your rise through the ranks of intelligence operations administration. The journey. Give us a give us an overview. Well, I had I had a great experience. I was I joined in 1960, mm-hmm. uh, so I and I'm t- today I'm 84 years old today. So Amen. I, I, I worked in the young. CIA from <laughs> 1960 to 1992, and then I continued a variety of different uh, activities after I retired in '92. So it's it's been a very uh, a busy life. Mm-hmm. I started out uh, my my. My first job was not very much, quite honestly. It was a, as a file clerk working in right. the agency. It wasn't a very good job, but it was at the very bottom of the agency. And I was lucky to to get involved in 1962 in the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, when mm. the Russians put missiles into into Cuba, and mm-hmm. uh, that was a, a major uh, crisis involving President Kennedy. <clears throat> and the intelligence community gave support of that activity, and I worked on that for a couple years. Learned a lot. So you got an opportunity to to talk to a lot of people, and uh, mm-hmm. and 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 learn the business of being an intelligence officer. Wow, wow. So can you share a little bit when when because you I mean you know when you look at your span, your career, it's over 30 years. And, and like I said, you know, the government system, you go from a GS-7, like you said, up through the ranks, into the to team. Being a deputy director. <laughs> yes, yes acting, absolutely. Acting director. Yeah, so that, I mean, that is a commendable journey, coming right out of college. And, you know, you said you, you started well, at the... Yes, go ahead. It's kind of slogging along, you know, learning the business, uh, yeah. being, being a journeyman and kind of working your way through, up through the system, trying to understand how it is in a, in a very big, complex organization and how, mm-hmm. how to, uh, how to, how to uh, move ahead and, and uh, show what you can do. And the agency was very good to me. It gave me great opportunities to do things. I was sent off. Uh, a couple of years after I left the Cuban, working on Cuba, I was sent off to brief the Shah by myself to brief the Shah of Iran and the president wow. of Pakistan. Mm-hmm. And later in in my career, I fortunately was involved in doing the president's daily brief, which is a document that uh, provided to the president each day, providing him intelligence on what's going on in the world and and describing kind of what the intelligence community believes is the significance mm-hmm. of that a- activity. So I had a chance to brief presidents <clears throat> on several occasions. Uh, I started out briefing, briefing President Reagan um, in the period before he was uh, 
between when he was elected and when he was actually inaugurated. For a couple mm-hmm. months, I saw him every day and briefed him about uh, the world events. Was there a pro- was there a was there a particular process to how you prepared for the briefings? Yeah, usually I came in. It was a fairly fairly rigorous routine. During the day, you'd, we talked to analysts and talked to the people who were the experts in various areas, <clears throat> suggested things that needed to be written, and then that evening they were written up at, at night, and then in the morning I, I used to come in at about 5 mm-hmm. uh, and uh, and take the document to the <clears throat> to the president or, and and sit, read, uh, talk to them about it. They would read it, and I would comment on, add information about it. So <clears throat> that was that was the routine. A little, a little bit like a newspaper, actually. Okay. Okay. But you had to present in such a way that was, uh, oh, what's the term? Do I want to I want to use either generic or objective as far as the information because the you know you in in your bio it states that you had, had established a reputation for integrity and objectivity and i would imagine well, intelligence that, officers if they're good and if they do yeah. it the right way they they do not they're not they comment on what it what the intelligence the, the significance of the intelligence and what it means mm-hmm. but they they are careful about just using the information available to them and not not, and not providing information that's based on their own opinions. Yes, yes, and that's a fine. I would imagine that's a fine. That's a fine line. Can you touch it on? Is and a you fine may have. Line. Yeah, I can imagine that. That's a a, a a fine line. Can you touch a, a little bit on? And you may have already. Can you touch a little bit on? Kind of give us a, a description of each area because there are four areas: intelligence, operations, administration. And, and science, technology, and of course the deputy director. So, can you give us a little job description, if you will, of the intelligence? <clears throat> well, the, the, the if main, there's such a thing. Oh yes, there are. There are four major components. One is is the operation side, which runs. Which actually, if you think about it, there's there's some of the people you see on television who say they were operations people. They worked overseas. They recruited agents. They tried to get intelligence in the country they were working on uh, that and and they essentially are the people that do human intelligence there's another group that does analysis it takes the information from all sources photography uh, signals uh, human sources open press tries to merge it together and and make a story out of it put it together that makes sense and that provides a perspective of the particular problem you're working on, whether it's a foreign country, an economic problem, or a political problem. It tries to gather together the information and essentially write and present uh, analysis of that information. The science and technology people that I worked on in that area as well are the people that they designed originally the, the first satellite that produced that took photographs, and mm-hmm. and uh, uh, so <clears throat> so they they were the people that ran large technical programs to collect information, <clears throat> and then the the administrative people, uh, like you would expect, do do things that you would expect them to do, but they also right. because you have to support a very large overseas element, mm-hmm. you end up having uh, to do things in secret provide information to protect your people you have to you have to have medical service for services for them in some cases <clears throat> so they you provide all the administrative support to keep a very complex organization moving wow. so it's a big wow. you know it's a big it's a lot intelligence is a, a big business yes yes and what you were speaking to earlier in regard to the presidential briefings, I can only imagine that with all of this information that you have and the process that you have to go through to present it to the pres- the, the president, like you said, in, in a manner that is objective in order for 
um, him to make a decision as to, you know, what what happens next. You know, what, That's right. what well, how do you act on it? Be done? The, agency, yes, how do the agency doesn't act on things. It provides the, it provides information. Now there are some areas where it is more where it is more active, but that is after if if there is a particular program that is sponsored mm-hmm. by the, the, the executive, the president, that that he needs to to fulfill the agency in some cases does things overseas that are more operational and, and not analytic. But for the most part, it's a collection organization that gathers together the information, tries to make sense out of it, and provides that information in a systematic way to the policymakers. Not just the president, but kind of all the policymakers, Secretary of right. Defense, Secretary of State, and other people who are involved in the process. In, in, in your journey in working with the CIA and, and knowing what you know, knowing what you have known versus what the public knows or what the public has known at certain points of time, what perhaps has been your biggest frustration? Well, I think part of, I think it is, it has been a variety of different things. One, Mm -hmm. there is a certain mystique about CIA or there was. Mm-hmm. about a secret organization provide, gathering secret information and providing it to policymakers. And so that's not information that's generally available to the public. And that creates some suspicions about, well, what's going on and how do you do this and how re- and do you do it and, and how uh, uh, honestly do you provide the information? Uh, how objective are you? There's always There's always that concern about any organization that's a secret organization that doesn't advertise uh, its information widely. So, so there's always a concern, I think. You have to, you have to tell the public uh, enough so that they have confidence in the system, but not so much that you, you reveal the in- information and the sources of information and therefore compromise your sources. So yes, it's an and, interesting and, and possibly of putting how much you could do. In, yeah, and possibly putting soldiers in harm's way. Would that be correct? Well, you don't want to do that. Obviously, cool. you don't want to put right. your own people right. in harm's way, uh, and you right. don't but want for the balance. You, well, like you were absolutely. saying, absolutely, the there's yes. there's a good balance between that, and it and it it is a it is a, a difficult business, but one that I think is. Very important that the policymaker get the best intelligence and information they to to serve them as they make policies about very complicated issues. Talk to us a bit about your and and I and I just am really um, you know when I read this I'm like wow he he really is a man that really had to keep a level head throughout his, his career. Um, you've been known as a stabilizing influence in addressing hot-button issues. And we, again, we may have just, just kind of touched on that a little bit. But can you elaborate on that a little bit more of how, how you feel you developed that reputation? Well, being, I think you need integrity. You need to be honest yes. to mm-hmm. the people you're serving. And you need to be, you need, in, in my view, you you have to have a certain sense of humor too, and, and not take yourself too seriously. But <laughs> yeah. it, it requires a, a kind of a, 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 a good deal of effort and hard work to do the job and to convince others that you know what you're talking about and that you're providing information that's that's accurate and and uh, timely. <clears throat> so it's a, a job of persuading others that you that you're uh, that that you have confidence and that your organization is competent. So it's it's a kind of a constant process of reassuring people and, and also making sure that you live up to your own standards. Yes, yes, absolutely. Now, the, the, the title of your book is Unclassified. 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 So what, right. what, what has to occur and what constitutes information we're going to talk about 
talk, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But what constitutes information going from classified to unclassified? Or well, is classified, that classified information, it's, or information is, that classified? is classified <laughs> <clears throat> in a variety of different ways, depending on its source. Some mm-hmm. information is, choir, is acquired from sources that are very sensitive and, and very, and, and very uh, need to be protected, otherwise you'll lose those sources. Mm-hmm. Other information is, is uh, <clears throat> it's kind of through a whole set of, of uh, uh, sensitivity. So <clears throat> when you get information from a human source that's doing it, and when you, you have to realize that when you're collecting information from human sources overseas, those people, in some cases, are actually... Uh, giving you information that they have, that they shouldn't be giving you from the, from from, from their where? country. Yeah. So they're they're violating the laws and the rules of their own country. You, for one reason or another, you've convinced them that supporting the United States and giving mm-hmm. us information is important for them as well. Yeah. So there's a so that you have to protect those those sources. The sources. You also have technical sources satellites mm-hmm. and other things that you're using <clears throat> that if if you're if everybody knew about them they wouldn't be effective so Correct. so those things are all all end up that's why they're classified what i wrote mm-hmm. and why i called the book unclassified is that i didn't talk in great detail about mm-hmm. sources and methods yes. of how we get the intelligence i talked about some of the issues and problems that were faced <clears throat> but uh, but not the details of the information Correct. itself. Correct, and and of course with with information being classified, and who has access to that information, along with that comes security clear- clearances and the levels of security clearances as well. Correct. Certainly. For instance, I mm-hmm. had to give my book. My book was reviewed by CIA to to make sure that from there point of view it did not reveal information that they would consider classified so they read it looked at it asked me to make a couple minor changes that they thought where i had said mm-hmm. things that they would rather i did not say they thought might reveal something and mm-hmm. but nothing because I, I wrote it very carefully not to do that so, so i didn't have a problem Yes, yes. Now, you know, you you've had quite a career and you've writ- written this book. You're you're now retired and you you have had the opportunity to of course reflect on your career. What advice can you give either current and or future administration on the value and the importance of agencies such as the CIA when it comes to worldwide issues? Well, I think it's absolutely imperative that that there be a good intelligence organization, uh, that it provides, and that it provides information in a clear and objective way that doesn't try to, if you will, put its finger on the, on the, on the, the, uh, the scales to, to, mm-hmm. to give, to give its own personal views or political views. So I think it's very important to have an independent organization that that uh, has people who are at, with integrity and honesty uh, who know what uh, know how to do this and know how to do it well. Uh, it takes yes. it's not, not something that you learn overnight. It's it's a skill. You you have to go through a journeyman. You have to learn it like any other uh, profession. Profession, and I consider mm-hmm. it being a profession. An intelligence officer as, is a, a skill that's learned over the years. So it's uh, and it's you know it's very valuable from the point of view of the policymakers because without that input, you're you're essentially operating in the in the blind without the full knowledge of what's going on in the world and what mm-hmm. difference it makes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. What impact do you feel? Um, what impact do you feel that all of the decisions that you've made, or some of the decisions that you have made, have had on uh, worldwide 
statewide issues? I think it's had. I think. I think the organization, mm-hmm. and uh, and I, me personally is it's less of a. I represented an organization and the views of an organization, so it was a collective activity. I think mm-hmm. individuals don't don't make don't do usually come up with any grand solutions yeah. to problems, but the organization by As systematically working mm-hmm. issues learns how to do it, learns how to provide information that's valuable. So it's it's something it's it's like it's like what do you learn in school? You learn how to do things, how to organize your thoughts. You're helping others do exactly that. How to organize material, how to think about complex problems and and also where there are opportunities for the United States. Things they could do or things they wow. shouldn't do. Wow. Yes, yes. What are what are uh, some of the? Can you share with us a couple of the highlights from your book? A couple of things that you felt were important to include. Well, I I would go back and say, probably from my point of view, probably the the greatest learning experience was being involved in the Cuban Missile Crisis, mm-hmm. and then being being sent off to brief uh, other leaders, foreign leaders. And the agency was very good about giving junior people great responsibility and then ability to brief senior people, whether it's presidents or other senior people. After I left the agency, I was involved in a variety of different things that my experience in the agency allowed me to, to do better. I, I was on a commission that looked at the, uh, the, the problem of Catholics and Protestants in in Ireland, the Good Friday Ireland. Agreement, and I worked on that for seven years. Uh, I went to Ireland, Northern Ireland, and Ireland nearly monthly for seven years uh, after I retired. And that my my experience in the agency helped me uh, deal and provide uh, information and and deal with that problem in a more effective way. And and uh, later. Uh, after I retired, I was asked to do a critique of the of our intelligence uh, prior to the war with Iraq. Uh, I was brought back to do that with a small team of people. And again, my experience uh, in the in the agency for 33 years <clears throat> helped me a great deal trying to figure out how to do that. So, you know, it's uh, I've had a lot of good experiences. I had a lot of yeah. opportunity to travel to be foreign leaders, to be involved in difficult problems. And uh, I always say the lessons I learned in it, I, I always put down into four categories. You can mar- First of all, marry a woman, and I, ma- I married a great woman who helped me by <laughs> taking care of a family where I was off and wandering around. And I right. spent uh, 66 years with her, so... Um, and I think you have to have a sense of humor. Yeah. And I think you have to work hard and kind of be yeah. true to yourself. And then you have to like what you do. And if you mm. do those things, you know, and that's true nearly any problem that people face. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. All those lessons are probably pretty good lessons. Indeed. Indeed. And you said you you and your bride have been together for 66 years. Did I hear that correctly? Yes, 66 years. That's right. Six. Okay, so I have to hit the pause button for a moment because I, I always ask a question. Anyone that's been married 20-plus years, I have to pause and ask you to share a nugget or nuggets of wisdom with couples out there, whether they're new couples or couples that have been together, what you feel has been the key or keys to the longevity of your relationship, given also your profession and what and what you you've done. Well, I, you know, I don't know what the magic is. Part of it is you have to love someone. <laughs> there you go. And, and you, yeah. have, you have to be honest and faithful. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and you have to. I think you, again, you have to have a sense of humor and be able to talk to each other about complex issues. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important. Uh, we have three 
four, four, four children and and nine grandchildren. So they all make you, uh, uh, you know, they make <laughs> you, uh, they, they make you grow up too, even uh, yeah. as you grow along. And uh, so that I think they're all important to to your life and to your happiness. Yes, yes. Be- because you know when you're whether you're CIA or uh, one of the other organizations or or military, uh, you know there's or a, a plumber or electrician. That, yeah, <laughs> true. But they don't they don't stay quite gone quite as long. <laughs> as, no, that's right. You but know, as if you travel yeah. a lot, and I left yeah. a lot and and traveled, and uh-huh. and my wife was kind of left alone with with uh, the, children to take care of them and pay the bills and do all the things that that are, would be expected if I was there so right, you have to yeah, you have to awesome. find somebody who's pretty independent too right exactly that can navigate all of that and and That's make right. those adjustments when you know when the times when you're you know you're back home as opposed to when you're um, That's right. You know, away. now when you were away, when you were away, was it was it considered a deployment, a PC, PC, PSCS, TDY? Was no, just, I, most of mine were yeah. short trips. Short um, trips, okay. Although I went, I I spent some time in the Far East during yeah. the Vietnam War. Uh, I spent a couple months away right. uh, as a, a reports officer in the field, <clears throat> but most of mine were traveling and and doing business overseas so mm-hmm. you know weeks at a time but not not years weeks and i would i would imagine as you with everything that you had to consider in the different uh seasons of of your journey in this particular uh job on top of everything else you also probably had to consider the cultural differences and it, 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 you know, like if you were you, I believe you mentioned the uh, Middle East and being in oh, the yeah, Middle East. Oh yeah, there's no question. I mean, you, you know, and that and that's what you do as an intelligence officer working on a country too. You have to you have to look at at times. You have to step back and look at the world the way they look at the world to, to understand how they're why they're acting the way they do, why they're doing things. You have to try to understand as best as you can. From their perspective, mm-hmm. what the world looks like and how you look. So you need to put your, you know, you need to put yourself in their shoes, if you will, and uh, and kind of look and and try to understand a, a broader perspective. And that's something that everybody should do when they're dealing with any any uh, culture, is try to understand yeah. how the perspective of the culture, what how they look at the world and sometimes their views are rather different and their perspective yeah. is rather different yeah and I, stepping outside of yourself and looking seeing how they view things I think is is you know huge because you know there's so many people that do not unfortunately have the opportunity to travel outside of their, their respective country be it the US or Middle East or wherever it is so I think a lot of times it's difficult for them to understand that perspective of, of, of what you were just speaking to. If there are young persons that are listening that are interested in becoming a part of the CIA, what kind of, what, what are some advice that you would have for them? What are some things that you would have them to consider or questions perhaps, questions that they need to ask themselves before venturing into this field? Well, obviously, you, you need a strong interest in foreign mm-hmm. policy in foreign countries and in other cultures and a strong interest in, the, in, in uh, at least understanding people and how they, how they react. And you need to be, you need to, some ed, considerable education. It doesn't hurt to have a little bit of history and knowledge about the world and and it also uh helps to be able if you have language abilities to develop those so you know there's a lot of different ways you could approach the problem um uh, CIA has a very good website 
that talks about people, gives people information who are interested in being intelligence officers. There's a lot of different things to do within a very large organization, everything from being an economist to a political scientist to being a doctor, a psychologist. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of jobs available. Uh, all of them look at foreign, the, essentially the problem of dealing with foreign policy, but the, the different skills and, and uh, abilities required. So, so it, it is, uh, there's a lot of opportunities. Share with the audience how they can stay connected with you and also how they can purchase your book and find out more about former Deputy Director Richard James Kerr. Well, it's on Amazon, and I think it's in Barnes & Noble. It's on Kindle, so it's available there. Um, it's not a long book. As I told, uh, as I said at the beginning, it's essentially, uh, I describe it, I was a fairly ordinary person going into the organization. Uh, I, had a, I didn't have a particularly good uh, early background uh, or education. Uh, I, I went to college, but I, 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 was a, I, I developed slowly in terms of, of learning as a very young person. And I describe it as kind of an ordinary person growing up in a, in a very complex organization who so had some great experiences. And, and that's not a bad way of describing my life. Right, right. I love it. I love it. Is there another, is there another book inside of you, Mr. Kerr? <laughs> well, I, read, I wrote a book last year and published it called uh, mm -hmm. The Dark Side of Paradise, which was a book of short stories. And they're they're not really related to my work in the agency. They're out of my imagination, and they're a little on the weird side. Another side of the the former deputy director, folks. So are right. we going to be able to? We're going. <laughs> no, it's we'll an Amazon to, too. It's an Amazon. It's there you go. <laughs> it's it's called the dark side of paradise. The dark side of paradise. A Available on Amazon. We are speaking with former Deputy Director Richard James Kerr of the CIA, and I believe Batman is back with us. Batman, do you have a question? Yes, sir, Mr. Kerr. I have two questions for you, Mr. Kerr. All right, one, after, yeah. re after retirement, are, are you enjoying yourself? Are you having fun? Oh, yes. <laughs> I had great fun writing my short stories, and I've had fun over the years kind of putting together this memoir that I'm now publishing, the book called Unclassified. I have a great deal of fun. I do talks in my town. I do lectures. I've, I'm on a, busy mm -hmm. on an archaeological project. I, I do a lot of things, and, and uh, I keep very busy. At, an 80, at 84 years old, I'm pretty busy. That's right. Sound like at you sound young like age that's before. Right. <laughs> young age. That's right. That's right. The 80s is nothing nowadays. I mean, people are doing well in the 90s. And my other question is, um, do, you, do you get a chance to sit back and enjoy some of these um, TV series on Netflix and HBO that, that has anything to do with the central intelligence agencies, the way they approach some of the, you know, a lot, it's a lot going on overseas right now. Uh, are you enjoying those programs or are they just too no, far-fetched? I, I don't pay much attention. I don't pay much attention to them. Most of them are well off the mark. They're not very realistic about what intelligence is all about or how it works. <laughs> he took so, all the yeah. fun out of I don't, it. I don't wow. pay that much attention. Don't engage. I read a lot about them. I read a lot of books about them. Yeah. About, uh, yeah, I think the... Yeah, primarily, I think, primarily history and foreign policy, not novels. Yeah. Right. I was about to ask you that because the novel's probably... The same way, probably you know, way far off, but I'm sure. Well, there's uh, some fun, you know. There's yeah. some that are fun to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, uh, they're not very accurate. Yeah, I understand. Right. And, you know, it's funny, um, um, Mr. Kerr. It seemed like, um, you know, you sound like you enjoyed um, that form of, uh, you know, uh, the agency so much that it sounded like you would have been a great professor in college. Did you ever think about teaching in college on the college level? Well. When I retired and then went on and did some things, after I retired, I was getting a little older, a little too old to do that. I did teach a few courses 
and uh, and I do a fair, as I said, a fair amount of lectures mm-hmm. here, even in Vero Beach, where I live, on foreign policy. But I, no, I, I would have enjoyed teaching, I think. But I, I just, it just not something I never really had the time, uh, the time to do. Yeah, right. I understand. Yeah, because right. I, I have quite a few friends that retired from law enforcement, and they were just so eager to to teach, um, you know, um, the science, the criminal law, and yeah. that kind of thing. You know, so they sure. love it. Yeah, they love it, and they got it's a, chance a great to be- way to continue. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a great way to continue your involvement in in something mm-hmm. you enjoy. Like, yeah, they loved it. They loved it, and, and they had the, they had the benefits of retiring in twenty years, also. So they were still relatively young. Yeah, yeah. Have you have any of your children or grandchildren expressed an interest? No, not none of my uh, children were interested in. I actually, I was never really interested in having them do it either. Uh, right, but none of them were really that interested. They all went into rather different uh, went different directions but uh, that n- not into the foreign policy area yeah yeah awesome. all with, right with with the change in in uh technology over the years what did, was that ever a challenge along the way yes it was it is i mean uh, the actually the agency was a leader in technology it it developed the first satellites mm-hmm. and and it developed the U- Two airplane and the SR seventy one and uh, these are aircraft that were used for reconnaissance. So it, the agency was very much involved in the in the early years in developing the techniques and the the uh, the capability to collect intelligence. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yes. All right, Mister Kerr. Well, we appreciate you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Just just in in the information very. Very informative, very um, enlightening, and just I, I believe that it really has really heightened our appreciation for you know the organization of the CIA and what it does and has done and continues to do uh, for yes, our I country. So. so thank you so much. Thank yes, you so much You're for welcome. sharing very with much. us. Yeah, thank you for your years yeah. of service. And tell everybody too. to buy the book. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. It's out there. Amazon. That's right. Go out. <laughs> That's right. Check it out. It is entitled right. Unclassified. Yes. The it link is, is on Facebook. Unclassified by the former Deputy Director Richard James Kerr. It is available now on Amazon. To learn more about his journey and the CIA, you all please go out and support our guests. This all right. Just a, just a, that was a good conversation. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. was and we appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Kerr. And please tell... <laughs> Uh, your publicist that we say hello. Amen. Oh, good. Yes, I, I will. Yeah, thank you. Amen. All right. All right, Paula, are you ready to wrap it up? Absolutely. Talk to you later. Absolutely. Bye thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. All right. Yeah, that was good. That yeah, was it good was. Time. So we will be bringing yeah. our, fa- our Positive Power family um, guests, you know, from different genres. You know, there's a lot of genres out there we, we, we don't get a chance to get exposed to. And that was, um, this guy been involved with foreign policy for a long time. Mm, that's deep. Wow. All right. So, Paula yeah. G., before we wrap up the show, just want, want you to let everybody know where they can catch your TV show um, this week coming up since it's Monday. They got time to lock it in on that calendar, on that Google calendar. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, WATC TV fifty seven right here in Atlanta. You can log on to WATC two that t o o dot tv. If you have Hulu, Roku, Apple TV, Truly, Google Play, Jenico faith based TV, you can catch my journey with Paula G. We're also available at DeKalb twenty five access channel right here in DeKalb County here in Georgia. W E P H. We're also now broadcasting in the Chicago area so we're really in Lake County I believe it is so we're really really appreciative um, of that as well we are just growing by leaps and bounds and I thank Batman producer extraordinaire my journey with Paula G we've had some great guests we are we're preparing for our May 2nd May 3rd live taping of my journey with Paula G in the Positive Power 
21 studio. So we are excited about that. If if you have a journey, if you have a story to share, we invite you to reach out to us. You can email Jerry at jerryvoicelive at gmail.com or myself, Paula, at paulagvoice.com. Share with us a bit of your journey, your story, what you feel that you can share with the audience and how you feel you can uh, bless the audience with your journey, whether you're an author or you're an entrepreneur, an artist, whatever it is that you have to share, because we are all juggling this journey That's right. called life while walking in the gifts and talents that God has given us. Isn't that right, Batman? That's right. And also, you know, on that note, for those those of you that's out there, you have a powerful story yourself, and, you know, um, the Paula G Show, you've done that before. You've been on the Keisha. You've been on Shea Show. We have other uh, of, um um, platforms available too. You may need to do a short movie. You know, you may have a real powerful story that could be done in a short movie. I've been hearing um, how Netflix and Amazon them are cranking out millions because they want to be up to 50% of original programming. So, you know, that's a lot of shows. That's a lot of movies. And they're looking for some good yeah, stuff. Yeah. And a lot of people got great, yeah. great imagination. Just like Mr. Kerr, I'm sure he probably could put down a real decent movie. So, um, well, they. Oh maybe, yeah, maybe some issues with that, but he might have to make it up. Maybe that's why they make up so much stuff in the CIA because you can't tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> gotta make it. Gotta make it exciting. Classified information. Yeah, you gotta make Your it. Ex- yeah. information. That's right. You gotta make it exciting. So they make it up. So um with all yeah. that, just let's hit us yeah. up. Let us know if you got a great story because God has put us on this journey on purpose. That's right. He wants us to make a lot of noise. I know, I know you guys have read scripture where it said he want to hear it loud. He wants you to make some noise out there um, telling your story. You, if you play music, he want to hear it loudly. Um, it was funny. We were um, this this church service that we had this past Sunday, Paula G, was so unique. Um, you know, you know, uh, uh, Pastor uh, Tony Evans in Texas. Uh, he's on TV, radio and everything. Yeah. Well, you know, they, they from Baltimore. A lot of people didn't know they from the DMV. Uh, I think his mother is actually still living here on Poplar Grove Street, if I'm not mistaken. Well, um, they have a lot of family members that left Baltimore, I think, to go to Texas to, to work with him, doing various things. Anyway, his son is a musician, um, gospel artist, vocal. I mean, this guy has a powerful voice. He he, he actually worked with Kirk Franklin and Yolanda Adams when they were on tour. Um, uh, you know, he'll tell you they wow. got great singers with, uh, you know, you know, Kirk Franklin got great singers and he hangs right in there with him. And so he, he gave us, uh, he played three songs this, this, uh, Sunday, uh, at church. And, it, but what happened, he doesn't preach. So basically the pastor sat down, they had a discussion. It was like, I was watching my journey. And, um, it, you know, because it was on TV, because, you know, we watched, watched it in, on the big screen at our campus church, but they in Columbia where, it's, you know, it's, a, it's like a mega church there. Um, so anyway, we were there watching on the big screen. And uh, he, I mean, it was an incredible journey he's told. And some of it's on YouTube. My wife actually heard a lot of it on YouTube. So you guys want to look up Tony, Anthony Evans. He, he calls himself Anthony Evans. And uh, I guess if you just Google Kirk Franklin, right. you'll find the information. He has plenty of music out there on Spotify. Please. But anyway, he gave a free concert last night. So, of course, I had date night on Sunday. Um, <laughs> long story short, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> my wife, had my beautiful wife, had, had tickets to, to see Mark Anthony uh, at the Capital One uh, Arena where the Wizards play at in D.C. But, you know, I, I had a really long day, sir. I, I just knew I wasn't going to be for he, he has a lot of songs. And I said, oh, man, he's going to sing close to 15 songs, not counting the opening act, and she's not going to want to leave till the end. So I, so I talked my way out of it, and I actually, we actually gave the tickets to a couple that missed their 10th anniversary. They have, like, four or five kids and, you know, just one income. And I felt really good, you know, that she gave them the tickets. And he told me the day they had a spectacular time. And she didn't leave. She didn't want to leave until Mark Anthony said it was over and he was turning the lights out. So it was. I was so happy. It was just, wow. like, it was just like me being there. So anyway, so we ended up going to a concert Sunday and 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 I didn't know he was going to sing that many songs. Um, Anthony Evans sang maybe like eight songs, and it was it was just so beautiful. Mm. It was I mean they had the stage lit up nice, and you guys could probably see some of the pictures I took on um, Facebook. I didn't have a lot of um, storage, so I couldn't do a whole lot of video. But anyway, we had a great time, right? And um, you know it was a great weekend. So. Well, all I said, you know, check out Anthony Evans. Check out uh, Richard J. Kerr. His book is on Amazon. Um, check out Spotify for, you know, Anthony Evans. Check him out. Um, 
But Pastor is also having a party this Friday uh, in Columbia uh, at the uh, Bridgeway Community Church. For those of you in the DMV that want to hang out with the Batman, they're going to be doing something celebrating 10 years in radio. He's celebrating 10 years in radio for his show called Real Talk. And I think he's actually going to have people have opportunity Mm -hmm. to do some type of radio announcement, try to win a spot on his show. So, you know, Batman has been... It's getting ready, you know. So I'm gonna try out, try out for the. For oh the, yeah, yeah, gotta try out. So anyway, so that's that's what I got. And um, thank you, Paula, for an excellent interview. Really enjoyed um, you guys um, uh, chopping it up tonight. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 It was I'm, a great I'm, show. Yeah, right. and thank you all. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for the hearts. Thank you all for your love. Thank you all for your support. It's just, you know, just truly appreciate And like Batman said, you know, if you have, we all have a gift. You know, I, I say this all the time. Miles Monroe said, richest place on the planet is the cemetery because so many of us have gone, not us, <laughs> so many have gone to their graves not using the gifts and talents that God has given. Has given. You all have gifts. You all have talents. You have books. You have businesses. You have music. You have all of these things. We, we have a pl- we have platforms. We have Platform. television shows. We have radio shows. We can do voiceovers. We can do uh, short films. We can do short trailers for. There, there we are media. So That's reach right. out to us and help us to help you grow because it's all about exposure. You know, we tell our guests all the time. I'll share this real quick, Jerry. But we tell our guests all the time on my journey. That thirty minute show is is that one guest. If you notice, we don't we never have two guests. All right. On That's the right. Show. Although, you know, down the road we might. But right now, we never have two guests. So it's one, it's it's that one person. So if you are a guest on my journey with Paula G, that is, that is your ministry that you're sharing. But also, in reality, it's a marketing tool. It's a, a tool that you can take that show, you can put it on your website, you can post it to your social media, you can share it indefinitely with your audience. It's two, three years from now, someone is watching the episode of my journey that you were on. They're intrigued. They're That's interested. Right. You've captured their attention. They're now going to your website or whatever it is that you have to further support you. That could be in the in the form of you purchasing your music or your book or what have you. So it's not just about being on, being on one episode, viewing it one time, you know, people may be seeing it one time. It has endless possibilities, just like the trailers, the short the short um, film, mm-hmm. the podcasts, all of mm-hmm. those things are indefinite, um, you know, can be utilized indefinitely for you to continue to share your journey and to continue to share your ministry. So That's right. That's pray right. about it. Reach out to us and let's That's talk. That's right. Hit us up. And, you know, it's funny, speaking, of, right um, and speaking of short films, um, we actually shot – uh, a couple pieces um, a couple years ago with a lot of the guys that were passing through the DMV. And I'm going to be introducing some of those short pieces on Late Night with Jorvis Live. We actually um, are in another season uh, in DeKalb County, too, um, airing at 11 o'clock, 11 to 12 on Wednesday nights. So you'll be able to catch some of those uh, those segments along with some, some music videos. So if you guys got music videos professionally done, send them in. I've been getting them in lately, and they've been they looking good. So I'll uh, just give you an opportunity to be seen by Millions of households. Remember, Paula G is airing in four, four television stations. Which the ones that are on digital television actually reach out um, beyond just the one state. So you might be talking about eight states total uh, that uh, these households right. are picking it's up the show. That's right. And it's, house, yeah. that's right. Yeah. In Chicago, and we, is, it comes on the seven thirty. That are on, yes, and those shows on DeKalb were on Tuesday night at eight thirty. It's MVP with Sky. On Wednesday um, at 11 p.m. late night, radio with Jerry was live. On Thursday, it's the Red Room at 10:30. It's my journey at 11. In the Keisha Mosley show at 10:30, and the next level on Saturday at five o'clock. That's right. All right here. That's right. Yeah. In uh, in the Georgia area, produced by Positive Power 21. So, like you said, the reach is is um, is is continuing to grow. That's right. The reach is continuing to grow. So. That is quite a bit of exposure right. for your business, product, service, ministry, whatever it is. It's it's, it's a lot of exposure. That's right. And, you know, you know and, and, and I know we got um, a couple more minutes. Just, and, 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 and on that note, um, I remember listening to a young man was telling me how um, now because of streaming technology, uh, he said he wants people to know about him before they get to the concert. 
So in other words, he wanted he wanted you to have heard him on a radio podcast or or a, a film show or mm-hmm. even heard him. Matter of fact, he was on WKHS. Matter of fact, Wednesday. Uh, it was matter of fact, it, it was Clyde J that said it. He wants people to know him before he get there. So before he gets there in concert, he wants you already know his music. Because nope. the funny thing, at, at uh, Anthony Evans, we were singing his music. The people were singing his music, and at one time they did yeah. start out with his music mm-hmm. on the on a jumbo screen. But then, as the show went on, they knew his music. He felt so good mm-hmm. about that. But you know, the Walt Merlin has been a and DC's been that way for a long time. They're not coming out of. They don't like you. But you <laughs> know the way it is. But but you know, I mean, back, as as we say back in the day, that that's base, that's basically it's almost history repeating itself. Mm-hmm. itself you know for those of us who remember now you know we we all save and everything but we all know earth wind and fire come on now yeah, yeah. you know Still listen, listen to them listen to group. the music all of those years mm-hmm. all those years we didn't we did not meet earth we didn't meet wind and we didn't meet fire but we listened to the music for years but then finally maybe after what two three years we listen to the music we love the music they're coming to our city near us and what do we do we're ticket. now going to right. if I've never met them. That's right. But their reputation preceded them. You know, your your Jackson, Jackson Five, Michael Jackson, all of those performers. That's right. You know, um, we didn't know them personally, but mm. you, but but you, we we heard them. That's you right. know, through the vinyl, we heard them. And like, like you know, like you were saying, Jerry, now with the with the with the, you know, we have so much more of the visual now. That's right. In the media, you know, with the you know the face. Facebook Live, all these other uh, platforms, uh, the internet, truly worldwide. We and I mean, our, our friend Shoggy Tosh over there in uh, the UK. UK, the 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 yes, the UK, the African audience is now exposed to positive power. Jerry Royce Live, apology. That's right. And you know, you know it's funny too. I, I remember um, when Facebook Live was really coming on strong. I remember uh, being in Jay Williams' studio. We was at uh, Jay Williams' show in the green room, waiting to come on live. I think it was it was, it was actually Sheila Piper mm-hmm. Moore was there. I think Eva was there. It was quite a few uh, female artists were there. I think uh, Elizabeth Michelle Elizabeth was there. Jay Williams, of course, it was his show. Uh, Jason Nation, Siobhan, Siobhan Perry. And it's funny, we were sitting in the green room and all of us are really strange and just chit-chatting. And I realized we've seen each other on Facebook <laughs> many, many times. And, yeah, exactly. And, and when names started coming, I said, yeah. wait a minute. I watched your daughter's show. They were just telling me they was yeah. watching my daughter's show. And uh, and then I was like, hold up, wait a minute. You saw so it's, it was so funny, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so it's a small yeah. world. I mean, we're all being connected through social media and and then when you meet at these award shows or these you are, you just happen to be sitting in the green room with a with someone or I heart I remember sitting mm-hmm. I heart uh radio uh with um with um Jay Nicole Jay Nicole Jones. You know remember she used to be yeah. signed with Sony. Now she's a big time um working for Fox uh sports doing gospel right. echoes of glory, you, you know. So we never and, know. And you know when I, I I, yes, and I you know I travel over to the UK at least once a year, and um, because of this worldwide exposure, I'm speaking as a witness. Because of this worldwide exposure, you know I'm over there and I've done talk uh, Shoggy's show a couple times when I've been over there, and people are chiming in. Yeah, you know oh because they because they know oh Paula G you're here in London you know this is great, and I'm like oh my gosh these people know who I am the World Wide Web. The That's world right. wide internet is a is a powerful tool and, and what is produced from Positive Power Twenty One is professional. Um, definitely will give you longevity and whatever it is that you do. So we gotta think out the box. That's right. You know, we gotta think Time outside the box Time for when TV. it comes to sharing our ministries and sharing our journeys. Hey Paula, um I didn't get a chance to talk to you about this, but you know, um one of the I think it's HBO is about to produce uh, Don Cornelius, uh, I think a mini series on Soul Train. And remember, I've been promoting, you mm. know, uh, the the yeah. guys that got me excited about television. That was Don Cornelius, Bobby Johnson, and uh, Flip mm-hmm. Wilson. I used to love the Flip Wilson show, and of course Earl D. Oh, Graves. Yeah. You know, he, of course, you know, uh, Black Enterprise got a little bit in the television for a minute there, I think, on YouTube. But um, those were the guys mm-hmm. that kind of influenced me mm-hmm. to get into media, you know, whether it was publishing magazines, 
or, or whatever it was, TV, those guys. And now we're going to see a behind the scene what really went on with the empire of Soul Train. Because you figure as a black man back then, that dude made some millionaires. You know, remember, that was the only real TV that was for African Americans yeah. at the time, unless you were able to get on um, um, the Dick Clark show. Because he, he loved um, uh, Soul Music, yeah. Dick Clark. You know, he, mm-hmm. you know, he had some guys on that. that he really did. Yeah. Like he got Sam Cooke and, and them, and, all know, those guys. I, you know, I've been watching this month on on um, Netflix. Not that I'm promoting Netflix, because you know, but they they have had some great documentaries uh, for Black History Month. There was one on, on and Jerry, have you have you ever heard of what is that man's name? Clarence Avant. They call him the Black Godfather. Yeah. And evidently, he was a New York City. He was a promoter. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah, back in the day, that that was really interesting. I mean, he talked. He talked about um, 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 Dick Clark. He talked about Don Cornelius, and and you know, just kind of how all of that came about, and you know, the the racial imbalance at that time, mm-hmm. and and how he was able to navigate that world and and produce the artists that he did. Um, there, if if y'all get a chance to get on Netflix, I think it's under the Black History Month. Yeah, he's been uh, out there for a minute too. That documentary. Yeah, that one was huge. The killing, the two killings of Sam Cooke. Yeah, that, that was, was a really that good was one. Huge. Yeah, that was good. Um, that, him, that one and, yeah, and one about Teddy yeah, Pendergrass are really, really good because you know they kind of remind me of what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma. What if? Tulsa, Oklahoma, mm-hmm. live today. You know, that was a Ooh, thriving black community. And, oh, it, and Sam Cooke and Teddy Prendergrass was one of the first two that was going to be moving into starting their own record label and owning their own masters. Of course, James Brown got away with it. Um, I mean, Ray, I mean, not James Brown. Yeah, yeah James Brown and, and Ray Charles. Those guys <laughs> had already in the back of their mind that they weren't going to allow anybody to keep their masters. They they knew what they, they saw their vision. You know, and when the vision is strong, yeah, yeah. you're going to stand up stronger for there it. Was, you know? There was one scene. There was one scene in was it the two killings of Sam Cooke, where it was Sam Cooke, Muhammad Ali, I want to say Malcolm X, and ooh, who was the fourth one? I I, I don't want to call the wrong name. The fourth one, oh, and the, the 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 uh, narrator was saying with. Then a year, you know, two of them had been assassinated, and then the third was assassinated the year after that because of the fear of those the four of them right. and the power that, that the yeah. four of them had in the African American community, saying that it was just it was too much power. It was, and it, it spoke was. to, yeah, yeah, and then it spoke to over the years of of how. You know, each generation, whatever leader that has arisen, has either been murdered or assassinated. And then I finally—I know we got to go. And then I finally saw the Thirteenth Amendment. Have you seen that, Jerry? No, I haven't seen that one yet. On Netflix, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna catch that. Ooh, yeah. I, I had—I had to give myself a minute because I oh, knew. Oh yes, I, I did. Gonna, I did see that one. I, yes, I did but see that. One. It just. It, yeah, that was a good one. Yes, you, yeah, it was a good one. And just it—it it, it just talked about how. Um, and I thought it was a good demonstration talking about how the system has evolved over the years, but the but the but the the foundation of the system was still the same, and that that's, and it speaks to suppression. Yeah. It just simply has changed, you know, over over. Uh, the decades that was that was powerful as yeah, well. It was, but you know, I'm um, glad to yeah. see that. Um, some knowledge of our, is power. Yeah, you know, it is. You, and people got to check this, and that's why I think when you see the success of people like um, Fifty Cent, you know, Curtis, and some of these other guys, it's because mm-hmm. they went back and they looked at at those documentaries. They saw those documentaries years ago. Yes. Uh, they had, you know, they, they, yeah, of course, they, they got access to it, right? Mm-hmm. And they understood what was the next step and how they had to protect themselves. Not just from the streets, right. but from mm-hmm. the competition, the, the, who was fearing them the most. And look at these guys now. Um, even Bobby Johnson, Bob mm-hmm. Johnson, um, Bob Johnson, he, he, it, it shouldn't have just stopped with him being, having a BET network. I'm sure it was probably some others that was right around the corner that was closing in to having a network empire like that. Just like Sam Cooke yeah. and Teddy Prendergast were that close to having a record label that was going to be just as powerful as your Sony's and and, and, and your Atlantic Star yeah. and all of them, because they knew that when those right. guys 
have taken over. They knew a lot of those 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 big time artists, black artists, was going to fly with those guys. They knew it. They knew it. Mm-hmm. So that's why mm-hmm. you know I always it, believed it, it that, just, you know that conspiracy. You know whatever you want to say it is. Yeah, just all it boils down to money. Right. Yeah. Right. Because it's, it's all it boils about down money. to money. Right. When you really sit back and look at it and analyze it, it's just like the whole vote. When we talk about the voting and and, and you know of course the pres- the presidential election. It's crucial. We have to vote. We have to vote. But the but and I think it was in the thirteenth amendment, one of those, where it was saying that the the real what we really we what we need to focus on, we don't focus on, are these local elections. Your right. your your, exactly. your uh county, your councilmen and, and senators, and, your, your congressmen, your, all uh, that stuff. City commissioners mm-hmm. and all of those individuals in so it's there. And I think a lot of times we overlook that those elections. We focus on the presidential, which rightfully show so we should we so we should, but also we pay attention to what is happening locally, looking at those dates as to when those local mm-hmm. elections are coming up, getting out and making sure the right city uh, council people are in place, the commissioners and, and, and all of those, you know, and also uh, because of that too, those those area that you live in. And see those guys eventually start moving because I watched um you know, and Hogan, you know, Hogan and those guys, the, the, they start off as mayor or governor or whatever officials yes. in your county. Yes. And next thing you know, they run in the state and now they're the senator. So, you know, it's, they, they, it's like a stepping stone for them when they start off in local government because they got to get to know you right. and they want to visit your schools and they want your vote. And next thing you know, mm-hmm. you vote because mm-hmm. of, cause you're familiar with them, just like Reagan. I feel the reason why he won was because everybody knew him. You know, when he was a cowboy, just like, you know, Trump, they, you know, they was familiar because there of television. Exactly. And eventually people go with what they familiar. It's just like branding. It's like that's what television does. Exactly what television does. Anybody right now, the I branding. believe you, that's yeah. on television right now doing the right thing could can, can compete in the elections because people know who they are and they're comfortable yeah. with them. You know, just like Honest Wilson, nigga, won California as a governor. Yeah, you know, he was right. So on TV, all all the big it's movies. Not the it's not even about the policy, right? Yeah, because that's what you see. You, you know? feel comfortable. Your brain is already brain already told you. Hey, that's my man right there. Let's, let's give him my vote. All right, everybody. Okay. Um, it was an exciting show as usual, Paula G. You know, you know, we got so much out there right now. We can hit him with so much, <laughs> but we got to end the show. Yeah. It's going. You catch it on Spotify. <laughs> yeah. You catch it on iHeart, Spreaker, Cashbox. You name it. Whatever your favorite platform is, you can catch Late Night with Jervis Live Worldwide with Paula G and Shay Samuel. Don't forget the Monday Night Triple Podcast starting off with Riri. Had a powerful show tonight. Two young ladies in Jacksonville are writing stage play, getting their start, keeping the faith, selling out performances. The second show, Lakeisha actually had a young man who, who writes stage plays in Atlanta area, also an author. Stand by for him. He may also be on Kelly's show this week. We're just waiting for confirmation because we had a cancellation. We get a chance to uh, get get some more questions out. Of, you know, how Kelly dies deep too, so um, that's, that's all we have. Yeah. So don't forget WK. Just check us out the podcast live jazz experience on Wednesdays at eight thirty. The Bible study with Doctor V. Come on, y'all. Come on out and join. We got so much to offer you guys right here. At Positive Power. Don't break side, Christy. Me. All right, Paul. Do anything? Uh, any final? Anything final? Any final words? I'm good. Just thank you all so much for joining us. I love you all to the moon and back. And also just want to give a quick shout out to Mr. Clark Garrison. Let's just keep him in prayer. He's um, dealing with some medical challenges. And for some of you who have been with me for a moment, you know, I got my start in radio with uh, Clark Garrison Survival Radio Network right here in Atlanta, Georgia. That's my brother. He's near and dear to my heart. So it just ask that you lift a lift a prayer for healing. Clark Amen. Man. Amen. That's right. That's, he, that's right. He's a, he's a role model of mine. That's how I looked at him as a template for building positive <laughs> power. Amen. All yes. Right. Yes. Let's keep him in prayer. Yeah, definitely, definitely a, a presence here in the Atlanta area, but in media, radio, television, photography, um, definitely a presence. All right. Let's get out of here, Paula G. The Worldwide Podcast. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Double X. You are listening to Gary Wars Live Worldwide Podcast. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. 
I'm here, Positive Power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. All right, fam, don't forget y'all. Bible study is tomorrow night with Dr. V starting at 8 o'clock. So come out and join us. Then at Tuesday, you got a little bit of the testimony with Paula Breon. That's right, big, powerful gospel uh, powerhouse house music. That's right, she bring all her friends from the producing world, you know, musicians, vocalists. So come on, check out her show at 9 o'clock. She's coming out of New York City. And then back again Wednesday, we'll be in Chestertown with WKHS. That's right, radio.org. Right here, talking about some jazz music, the, the industry. We're going to have some exciting guests here to talk about what is going on with the streaming technology. And how can we make more money? How can we make money? So come on and join us, y'all, on 8.30 on Wednesday night with DJ Lady Bray and DJ J. All right? And also Thursday, be me and Kelly Holland be back at 10 o'clock. That's right, with another exciting guest. So stick around with Positive Power. You can pull up the app. Just right, go grab the app, iHeart, or Spotify, and just search for Jeremy's Live. And all of the podcasts will come up. All right, have an enjoyable night, y'all. We'll be back on Tuesday. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Mind yourself.